Welcome everyone to our AlphaSoft Online Demo Day. And thank you for joining us today. My name is uh, Torgrim Sandwell, and I'm the product manager for statistics and data analysis uh, software and tools here at the Norwegian office at AlphaSoft. And please note to everyone that you can, uh, you are welcome to stay for the whole day. We have eight webinars for today. And we also have our German day tomorrow and the engineering and development day on Friday. And you are welcome to join, of course, those days too. In the next webinar, we will be pre presenting a note. And it's given, the presentation is given by our very own Peter Maserat, who is at our Swedish office in Gothenburg. But before we start, just a little housekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box in the GoToWebinar panel on your right. We will try to answer them during the presentation and we will also hopefully have time for questions at the end of uh, the presentation. You will all be muted during the presentation to avoid any audio problems. And please note that we will be recording this webinar and both the recording and questions from this session will be answered and made available to you afterwards. We will send all of you an email with links to the recordings, the question and answers, and any related resources as soon as we have published them, hopefully by next week. With that, Peter, I will hand over the screen to you so we can get started. I should be uh, online now, I hope. Yeah, perfect, I can see your screen. Okay. Good luck with your presentation, Peter. And please let me know when you want to run the poll. We have a little poll for everyone. Yes, yep. Perfect, thank you very much. So welcome to this, uh, good morning, uh, and welcome to this session with, uh, with um, AlphaSoft and EndNote. So I'm just gonna give you a quick, quick, quick background uh, of myself. So my name is Peter Masrat. Uh, and I, as said, work at AlphaSoft, and I have a PhD in microbiology. I won't tell you uh, how long ago it was that I took my PhD because that would give you a hint of my age, uh, and we don't want that. So, uh, but I want to say that when I started doing my my PhD, I, I did it. You know, you ordered paper copies of your your journal articles, and you handled your references manually. Uh, and it took me about half my PhD until till someone um, made me aware that there are software out there that can actually do this for you, help you uh, handle your references, and uh, that we also had access to this for free at the university where I studied. So that's how I got into this uh, uh, this business, and uh, just you know the share, the, or just the. The, the the waste of intellectual resources uh, by demand you know deciding if a title should be in in bold or italic is is uh, in my opinion not not what research is about uh, so uh, that's what I'm going to show you here so let's have a look at uh, let's have a look at um, uh, endnote uh, today and what we're going to talk about so what is endnote for those of you who are who are new to this? So it's an it's an online search tool to search for for references. Uh, it's also, uh, a, of course, a reference and full text uh, organizer. In reality, it's a it's a database. So it's quite uh, it's it's quite complex and have a lot of features. Uh, but it's also very uh, set up in an easy way for you to to uh, use. Uh, and then there's something called a uh, site while write. Uh, functionality. So that's a connection between EndNote and your Word uh, software, making it easy to to put uh, reference into into Word. Uh, but not the least, and and that's something we're going to look. See, I'm going to try to to uh, to show you today a little bit more uh, is how EndNote is a help for you not only to to gather your references and handle your references and adding them to a, a Word document, but also to help you publish. Uh, so we're gonna, if if everything you know technically goes our way, uh, we're actually gonna write uh, a manuscript uh, and try to publish that today. Uh, so um, keep your fingers crossed. 
<clears throat> yes. So uh, just for you to keep something uh, at the back of your mind and then what we're going to talk about. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to create a library. Uh, we're going to add some references in different ways. We're going to add some, get some full text, some PDFs, look at that. We're going to look at the site while you write, how to you know, actually use your reference information in, in, a, in a manuscript or in, in Word. Uh, and then, of course, you know, we're going to make this, uh, this fake or make up, made up uh, uh, writing of a manuscript just to show you uh, a little bit. Hopefully, this is going to be fast paced because I'm, I'm going to show you, uh, I want to show you what's a little bit what's possible. Uh, we don't have that much time, so, so we can't show you everything. Uh, when it comes to, to that. So uh, I'm going to try to show you, you know, so at least you've seen it and then you know that it's there and you know, know to, that to search for the, the, the uh, functionality. So let's, uh, let's uh, start by, I'm just going to start EndNote. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, this brings me up. When you start EndNote, uh, you will probably get a notification today which is quite uh, quite interesting of a new update to EndNote that's been released. It's it was released in uh, in um, in the evening yesterday. So I'm going to show you that uh, could be a good uh, time to do that right now. Uh, if you would go to our uh, homepage alphasoft.com and you click on uh, training and events up here, uh, you will get to our training uh, uh, and events page. And then I can click on EndNote to the to the right here, uh, which shows me everything for EndNote. We have a lot of trainings in different softwares, but uh, if I click for EndNote, uh, I will see all the EndNote things. Uh, and uh, interesting here for you is that uh, on on uh, we have an EndNote training coming up just next week. Uh, but what I wanted to show you uh, is actually the this it's a free webinar that we're running about the new uh, 20.2 version that was released yesterday and there are some really nice features uh, i'm going to address them a little bit further on so we'll talk a little bit more about that and i'm probably going to uh, i'm probably going to repeat this information for you because I, I really think that you shouldn't miss out on this uh, and maybe this is good good time to to uh, run the poll uh, uh, to just to see uh, how many of you actually are on on Endo 20 and and uh, and not. So could you run the poll, uh, uh, Turgim? Yes, I can uh, launch it. Let's uh, see here. Hopefully, everyone can see the poll uh, right now. So if you can please um, answer which version on Endo are you using currently? And uh, this is good for me. Uh, uh, it's a good information for me because it, it makes me possible just for this session to, to tweak the session a little bit, depending on, on, on the audience here. Uh, and, uh, um, and most people have, have updated or upgraded to Endo 20 already. Uh, there are some nice features. Uh, I personally like it uh, quite a lot. Uh, on our first, our last uh, online demo day, we we actually was the was the, we actually were the first in the world to show EndNote 20 when it was released, uh, and they already added. As you can see, we're on 20.2 now, so they already added. There were some input from the users, uh, so they they quickly changed things that that the users uh, uh, wanted. So it's a live software, uh, and they are are uh, they are. Uh, developing it all the time which is important when it comes to to software of course yeah i don't know peter did you see the results no i did not no you, you're a presenter so that's probably why uh, but what i can say it's a mixed uh, group uh 40 percent uh, are using endnote 20 now uh, about a third are using endnote x9 or older and 25 percent uh, uh, are new to endnote or doesn't use endnote Perfect. Currently. Thank you very much. So that means that we are a perfect mix uh, right now, uh, meaning that you are a tough crowd. Some are using EndNote uh, and some are not using EndNote. So but I'm going to try and please you all and, 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 uh, and make sure that you find something nice. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create a new library here. So I'm going to uh, create a new library uh, straight away. 
let's uh, put it somewhere where I can find it. Uh, for those of you using EndNote, you know that EndNote always asks you where to save your library. It doesn't save it automatically. It always asks you where to save it. And you should never save it on an uh, online drive of any kind, OneDrive or Dropbox or a network. Always save it locally on your computer. Uh, iCloud uh, is also a no-no. No. And the reason is because it's an advanced software. It's a, it's a database, and databases do not support third-party syncing. Uh, with that said, uh, let's uh, save this. Am I saving it? I'm going to call it uh, AlphaSoft1. You can give it any name, uh, as you know. Uh, so <clears throat> Uh, ended up here on my second screen. So here's my uh, my uh, my EndNote library, and right now it's empty. There's no references here uh, uh, right now. I'm, I'm actually going to click on if you, I'm going to hover over this uh, column titles here, and I'm going to click on this uh, uh, this uh, cogwheel, uh, and I'm going to change the font a little bit so it's easier for you to to see, make it a little bit uh, bigger. So I have no uh, references here. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go to uh, PubMed because uh, a lot of people use PubMed. We all use PubMed. So I'm gonna go to PubMed. I'm gonna open my web browser and I'm gonna go to PubMed uh, and uh, I'm gonna search for uh, Allergy Dental Implant Europe. Uh, is gonna be my search uh, search term today. So I'm gonna search for that. Uh, and I get two results. Uh, so I'm going to take this one. Uh, this is the one I want. So I click on that. I'm going to send it to my citation manager, of course. Uh, it asked me, are you sure which ones you want to save? Yes, I want to do that. It will create a file. Uh, I'm using Firefox here, and I can recommend that because Firefox uh, is, is quite uh, logic when it comes to handling files. So it will ask you, what do you want to do with this? Well. Uh, I want to open this with uh, this ResearchSoft's direct export helper. I can open it directly with EndNote, but this is also installed together with you, EndNote. So I'm going to use that. Uh, and then, and then uh, Firefox asked me, well, do this automatically for files like this from now on. So if I check mark this, I won't do that. But if I check mark this, next time EndNote won't ask me. It already knows that, okay, just send, or Firefox won't ask me. It already knows, you know, send this, uh, this, um, uh, uh, reference information directly to my EndNote. So, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to click OK, uh, and immediately I have this reference in my uh, my uh, uh, in my EndNote. So, uh, as you can see, there is a group panel here where I can see at the top all references. Uh, there's one reference right now. I also have some temporary groups here, imported references to help me right now. I just import one reference. Uh, and there are some other groups here. Uh, in the middle, we have the, the reference, one reference for each row. Um, you can choose what uh, fields to show here, what information you want to show about reference. You can rearrange them, uh, the columns, just by dragging and dropping. Uh, and to the, to the right, you have a preview of the, of the reference. You also have up here, you have edit, so you can edit reference information. But, uh, I can see, since I'm using EndNote already, that there's no link here. So I have all this reference information. Remember, everything that you put into EndNote is made searchable. Uh, so I'm going to see, I would like a link to the actual actual uh, reference online. So I'm going to right click on this uh, and click on find reference updates here. So let's see if we can find anything. Uh, to update. So uh, to the right here is my reference. To the left is uh, available updates. Uh, you can see here that uh, sometimes it's not uh, correct. Uh, Joris, the name here, is without uh, the umlaut. Uh, and to the right, my reference, I have the correct one. So, but these are are synced. So if I if I scroll, you can see that all the blue fields are not uh, uh, are not identical. Uh, so the abstract is uh, is uh, I'm not really interested in it. I mean ah here we go the URL so I'm interested in that so I'm going to tell EndNote to update all empty fields because that's all I want to update so update all empty fields I'm fine and now I have a, a, a link to the reference so let's click on that 
uh, link and see what we get. So I run immediately into uh, to PubMed and uh, a nice, and you can see here that it's a uh, free full text. Uh, so I, it's uh, free available. I don't need a subscription, but you can also see something interesting. To the left here, you see this uh, purple uh, view PDF and the logo of EndNote. So this is something that's with EndNote 20 is automatically installed into your, as an add-on to your web browsers. I can find it, it, it searches the page that I'm on for any downloadable uh, journal articles, uh, PDFs. Uh, I have it, and then, then you have these pop-ups uh, everywhere to show that. I also have it up in the right here. I have it as a, a add-on, EndNote click. If I hover over it, it tells me that uh, uh, available is a publisher version and an open access version. Uh, at the very top, it says your EndNote click locker. I already have this. I already downloaded this in my EndNote click locker. Uh, but EndNote click is a separate, uh, it's a separate product for, uh, for EndNote. It's an add-on for EndNote. So it's not part of EndNote. Uh, basically, it, it's a one-click access to PDFs. I can click on it. And, and I get it into an online account and I can just shove it or push it directly to my EndNote desktop if I want to. Uh, we had some, we had a webinar about this uh, already. Uh, so keep a lookout for that if, you, if you're interested in more information. So this is one way to get the, the reference information, of course, but I'm not gonna use that. Uh, I'm gonna go back here instead. And instead I'm gonna ask EndNote for the, for the reference. So I'm gonna, I'm, you know, this is already highlighted, and then I'm going to click on this on this icon here. Search the web for full text documents for the selected reference, uh, and you're going to see here that there is something called Find Full Text to the left here. So keep an eye on that when I click on this. So I'm telling you now to search for this reference. So it's searching for the for the reference online to see if there are any PDFs, uh, and I already got. Uh, maybe I should have told you before, but you can see this um, paperclip here. So there's something attached to this one. I can also see it in the preview window here. There's a, a PDF attached here. I can click on it and I can open it in a built-in PDF reader. Uh, I can open it in an external PDF reader of my own choice, uh, for instance. And uh, it's all saved in EndNote. It's all indexed, all made searchable, the full content of the PDF. Uh, I can preview it here directly in, this, uh, in, this, um, in my EndNote window. Uh, so that's that's all uh, very handy. And something that uh, could be hard to find are these uh, these extra functionality if you preview it. So here you can actually email the PDF to someone. If I click on that, it will open an email and send send the PDF to to whomever I want to to send it to. Just remember the copyright issues. Uh, if you have cop if you have questions about the copyright issue and want to have the correct one, contact us. We have. Uh, some systems to help you with that, uh, for sure. So that's that's uh, that's one way, of course, to, to get uh, things into um, uh, into uh, to EndNote. Uh, but I can also online search here. I can also uh, connect directly to PubMed. So here it says PubMed. There are a lot of uh, of uh, online databases, more than uh, several thousand that you can connect to uh, if you click on more here. But I'm going to click on PubMed. So right now I'm connected to PubMed directly. Uh, so I'm going to make a search here as well. Uh, search uh, this, uh, and it found uh, 149 results. It downloaded the first 25 only in the temporary here in PubMed, uh, not in my all references. It's still not in my library. It's just in a temporary. Uh, and before I do anything here, I think I want to tag these uh, to know where they're from. So if I look at the edit uh, field and look at the reference information, there's a lot of a lot of fields here that I can add information to. And there's a field called label, not used to uh, by a lot of, um, uh, not used by EndNote itself, uh, basically. So I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna ask EndNote, uh, I'm gonna ask EndNote to add, uh, let's do that here, uh, this is, fast, but it's it's a good database uh, tool. So I'm gonna go into the database tools here, uh, change move copy fields in the label fields. Remember when you do this, uh, remember when you do this to, um, to uh, know what you're doing. Uh, 
because it's real easier. You can basically tell EndNote to do anything with your with your references. I can I can tell EndNote to replace the authors for all references. I could have several thousand references in my my library to replace the author field or the authors with my own name for all of them. And there's no no um, uh, regret here. Uh, once it's done, it's done. So re remember what you do. Uh, this could be a good reason to to join one of our trainings for EndNote so you get started correctly uh, with this. But I'm going to add PubMed here. Uh, PubMed in this field, uh, in the label field, insert er after any information that's already there. And I'm happy. I'm going to click OK. Uh, it tells me uh, this operation cannot be undone. It will do it for all the 25 that's shown. I'm going to do that. Uh, so it made the, the changes for, for these uh, references. Uh, I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Uh, so I'm going to take one of these. We're going to go into the edit field here. I'm going to go to the label field. Uh, and you can see that now it says PubMed in this field. So I can always find this, these references because they are the only one with the word PubMed in the label field. Uh, with that done, I'm going to add these references. So my 25 references, uh, I'm going to click on uh, add uh, the selected online record is, uh, records to, to your, your online library. So I'm going to do that. Let's click OK. Now I have 26 references here. Uh, let's look at all my references. Once I'm, now I've done this, uh, I might have ended up with some, some duplicates. So let's have a check for duplicates. Uh, I'm going to go to um, to library here and click on uh, find duplicates. No duplicates. Good. So that's fine. Uh, yes. So what do I want to do now? Well, we already added one uh, one reference here with with uh, with the PDF on it. But you know that's one way to get them. Uh, let's see if I can find some. Uh, some uh, more here so let's uh, let's do like this uh, no like that <clears throat> let's search for pubmed uh, in the label field of course because uh, i just added that because i only want the ones that i added from from pubmed so i'm going to search for for that uh, search it find my 25 references really fast. Uh, they all have in the pub in the uh, label field the word PubMed. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take a few of these. Uh, let's take uh, these four, uh, and I'm gonna ask EndNote to to search for for uh, uh, full text. And you can see again that uh, to the left here that it's searching for for full text articles, and it already found some. Uh, some articles for me. <clears throat> uh, one thing that's very very good here is that that uh, whenever you add uh, any any attachments, if you do it like this, or if you click on attach file up here and do it manually, uh, all files that you attach are copied into your EndNote library. So if you move your EndNote library or move the library to another another computer, well then then you have. Um, then you they have then you have access to all the PDFs as well. They they that they follow your EndNote library automatically, so you don't have to to think about that. Right. So uh, perfect, it did find some. So let's have a look at at the, the first one here and just see what uh, what that looks like. So if I look at the PDF, uh, I don't even have to open it. I can just preview the PDF in in this this preview window. Uh, I can search within the PDF, of course, uh, naturally. I can do that in my search fields up here. Uh, if I click on the on the top here and go to the very top, you can see that I can search any field, information fields. I can search the PDF with notes, only the PDF content, uh, or only notes that are made in the PDF. So how do I make notes? Well, you have some uh, some um, uh, tools here, these markup annotation tools. If I click on that, I get some additional tools here. I can highlight text, for instance, uh, if I want to do that. I can make a, a comment to this uh, about titanium dental impact, uh, implant. I really need to look more, more into detail about that. So I'm going to make a, a comment. Uh, I can open the comment and I can uh, click whatever 
look more closely uh, on this. Uh, I'm gonna spell it correctly. Uh, and I'm gonna add my my last name to it. Just remember when you do this, uh, this information is saved in the PDF into your EndNote library, which means that if you share, if you mail this PDF to someone, these highlights and these comments will be uh, accompanying your your uh, PDF to to the recipient. Uh, yes, for those of you who are uh, not uh, not uh, used to uh, to uh, to EndNote, uh, this is one way you might be uh, to get some some PDFs in here. Uh, you might uh, you might uh, have some PDFs already uh, av available to you. I'm I'm actually going to do it like this. Um, uh, you can see that I I can uh, 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 let's see. There we go. I was missing one one uh, reference. Uh, I'm actually going to take away uh, yes. Uh, to way, take away this reference, I don't want uh, too many uh, reference. I'm gonna <clears throat> uh, move reference to trash. There we go. Uh, I can also import PDFs. So if you have a lot of PDFs, you can import single PDFs uh, and then have EndNote find the reference information for you. Uh, you can even make EndNote uh, create a structure if you have the the references or the pdfs in a, in a folder structure on your computer already and you don't want to do this manually well you can have endnote do this i'm going to import uh, a folder with pdfs to show you uh, so i'm going to uh, import um, let's see if we can find this uh, and we have some i already prepared of course some 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 PDFs here. So I have this folder structure with the top folder called PDF tree. Uh, and then I have folder one, folder two, and folder three at, uh, below this as subfolders. And each of these folders contain a PDF uh, <coughs> uh, straight away. Uh, and I'm gonna show you just another nice feature if, if that would work. So I'm um, here I am in my PDF uh, tree folder in folder one and you can see there's a PDF there and, and notice the name here. It's just an unintelligent name. It doesn't tell me anything. Uh, but EndNote has a solution for that. So I'm going to import this whole folder, top folder. I'm going to tell EndNote to include files in any subfolders and I want EndNote to create a group set. So these are my groups here to the left and I wanted to create a group set based on my folder structure. I need to tell EndNote that it's a PDF that I import. I have a lot of choices to, to import different things, uh, but, it, but this is a PDF that I want to import and I want to import everything. So let's do that and see if it works. So EndNote will now scan the PDFs for me and go online. You can see that it started here already. It will scan the PDFs, it will go online search for the reference information, download the reference information, create the reference for me, attach the PDF and index the PDF to those uh, references, and then uh, uh, add everything to my, my uh, library. So here are the three references uh, that was, uh, was uh, imported. You can see the, the structure here with my top structure PDF tree, my subfolder, if I click on that, well, here's wh where my, my uh, my uh, reference is if i click on that you can see that endnote renamed the pdf into something that actually tells me something into the author name year of publication and uh, uh, and uh, the uh, and the the yes uh, <laughs> journal article so there's a lot of ways to get information into endnote uh, and with that said let's have a look at uh, uh, I know this is fast paced uh, and it's meant to be fast paced just so that you've seen seen things. So I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to quickly show you how to uh, how to use EndNote in Word. So let's do that. Let's uh, open I already have uh, uh, another library ready here with some references uh, already made for me. I have a, a 
uh, uh, hang on, I have a sample text uh, available to me uh, here that I can use as well. So this is my sample sample document. Uh, if I want to add a, a citation, I just put my mouse, uh, uh, my cursor where I want it. I go to EndNote. Uh, remember, it should say the same version number here that it says on, on your version of EndNote. Uh, I click on Insert Citation. Uh, yes, I can do that. Uh, insert Citation, and I will get a, a, a list of all my references uh, here. And I can search for anything, uh, anything here. So let's search for AIDS in this case. Uh, and you can see that I found two, uh, two uh, references with AIDS. So I'm going to do that. Um, uh, I'm going to do that. I'm going to add one of these. Let's add that. And you can see that EndNote immediately adds the reference uh, as a numbered style in this case and creates a bibliography at the very end. Uh, let's add some more references here. Uh, so I'm going to add at the next uh, paragraph here. But this time I'm going to go to EndNote instead. Uh, I'm going to look at my my. Um, uh, my references here because I want to add uh, a few different here. So I'm going to add these references, these two references. Uh, something they added in one of the updates was they re uh, they they reinstated this uh, insert citation for selected references. So this this uh, icon here inserts the selected references directly where my cursor was located in uh, in my Word document. So let's click on that. Uh, and you can see that it in, in inserted some uh, some references here. Let's add a, another reference down here uh, because I need a few references to show you this. Uh, I'm getting I'm running low on time here, but this will this will be nice. Uh, let's add another one here. Let's do it the same way. I'm going to go to uh, to EndNote instead. Again, uh, I'm going to take uh, let's see what we want here. Uh, I'm going to take this one. Uh, I want to add this one. Uh, I don't want to click on this now because I don't remember where I put my cursor. So I just highlight the one that I'm interested in. I go back to my, my document. Uh, there we go. Uh, I have my cursor there. And instead, I click on this small arrow here. And I say, well, insert the selected citations because then I can double check where my cursor is. So let's do that. And it inserts my, my, uh, my citation at this, at this place. Now, this is all fine and dandy. Uh, the output styles here, well, you have access to more than 7,000 styles for most uh, most journals. Uh, and you can redo that. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. Before, but before, you know, I just remember I want to add another reference here. And this is, of course, where you save the time. Uh, this is where you save the time. Uh, it shows you... Uh, it shows you that if I if I would do this manually and add the reference here, well, I have to renumber the the whole reference list, the the bibliography, and all the references in my document. I don't want to do that, uh, and that's the beauty with using a, a software like this. So <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna change this. In this, I'm gonna click on Edit and Manage Citations here. Uh, I want to add a reference here. Uh, I'm gonna click on. Uh, Insert citation uh, at this place. I get my own uh, search for for references here, so I'm going to add this one. Uh, I think, uh, or is this one I already have here? Uh, let's see. Uh, let's uh, add it anyway and see see what happens. So this one I want to add. I click on insert, uh, and uh, it adds the the reference there. If I click OK now, EndNote will add the reference. To that, I now have two references here. It will renumber my whole document automatically and my bibliography for me. So let's say I want to to uh, to take this into um, uh, in another. Let's say I want to send this to to science. Okay, so I click on on my style output style here. Uh, I go to science. Uh, if I don't find it here, I click on it, select another style, and then I get it. Then I get a list of the seven more than seven thousand available styles. These are just my favorites. I I mark them as favorites, so they are always here. So let's click on on uh, on science here. So now my document is uh, is um, uh, formatted according to to the the journal science. Uh, you know, maybe I send it there. Maybe I get rejected. Maybe I need to send it somewhere else because it doesn't fit into their their to science right at this time, and I need to publish it now. So 
let's send it to someone else. And, and this other paper, they want it in, in Harvard style instead. Okay, so let's click on, on Harvard. I have Harvard here, the Harvard style. Let's click on that. And my whole paper is now reformatted into the Harvard style. Uh, now I can do that. And of course, some, uh, some uh, uh, journals have started to want the bibliography in a category, categorized way. You can do that. I can click on categorize uh, reference up here and I can categorize my, my uh, bibliography. I can also do an output style, edit an output style and create one myself. I already done that in order to show you this. So let's take one that's categorized. So I created this author date style AlphaSoft category. So I'm going to click on that just to show you what it looks like. So everything is now, uh, it's an author date style. So the citation is author, author date. If I go down to the bibliography, you can see that my bibliography is now uh, is now categorized according to to uh, reference type. I can do categorizing to anything I want, basically. Uh, I choose to do it to according to to uh, to this uh, um, categorized style. So that's how it works in EndNote. There, are, of course, a lot of other other things here. Uh, good to know. Uh, I mentioned that we had a training coming up, and we have those regularly. And people, people tend, people tend to turn to to us for the trainings uh, when they either want to get started with EndNote, uh, or they already started, but they realize that they should they they should get uh, more effect, uh, efficient in using EndNote, uh, especially people uh, people who turn to us when they when they are about to start. Uh, they often realize that well, it's better to do it to start correctly from the beginning instead of you know four four years down the road realize that oh I used it the wrong way the whole time and now I have to you know try to solve this somehow. But have a look at that uh, on our our <clears throat> our web page. So uh, really really fast. Uh, I'm sure that there's a lot of question coming in. Uh, I'm going to take a few more minutes uh, here because. I'm going to create, uh, if we can do this, uh, I am going to create, uh, I'm going to uh, do some here. I'm going to add some because I don't want uh, too much information. I just want one. So let's, uh, uh, here we go. <clears throat> I'm going to create, let's let's uh, do what I said before. Let's let's write an article. Let's, let's, let's quickly write an article because uh, I want to show you some things there. So first of all, in order to write the article, we're probably going to, uh, we probably, we are probably going to, uh, uh, I'm going to, uh, here we go. I'm probably, we're probably going to work together with some, some people, you know, some other uh, uh, researchers. So we, we need to collaborate somehow. So we need to collaborate with the, with our citations or our references as well. So let's use the EndNote Online because the hub for all of this is EndNote Online. So let's use EndNote Online. Let's first of all, we need to sync our library. So let's do that. I'm going to click on sync configuration here. Uh, if I click on sync now, it tells me that I need to log in, of course. Uh, I'm going to sign up for an account here. Uh, really fast. This is going to be the fastest writing of a manuscript you ever realized. So now you're going to go home afterwards and have anxiety that you can write the manuscript this fast and you're going to wonder what you've been do doing for the last year now we are of course going to cheat in order to to do, do this uh, no uh, i hope you didn't see my my password because that's what i wrote there so uh yes so I write this, it already told me, you already an EndNote user, perfect. Uh, so I don't need to create an account. Uh, I'm gonna uh, log into my account. Uh, let's hope I did the, the correct. I'm just gonna have to agree to this <clears throat> and I'm fine. And I'm gonna sync and you see that now it's connecting to my EndNote online account. Uh, no, I don't wanna do this. I wanna sync straight away. Uh, and then we'll start syncing these references to my EndNote Online account. Uh, I hope that you can hear me okay because, of course, I'm using the the the, uh, the internet for this uh, at the same time that I'm I'm talking to you. So, but it should work fine. It's not that much information here, uh, uh, and it should be synced. 
Uh, I'm going to click on sync. You can see now that I'm I'm connected here, and instead it said sync status. So I'm going to click on this. Uh, I can see uh, this is my local library, 29 references, six uh, attachments, and this is my my online uh, library. There was some some information here already, uh, but everything is there. I've synced. It's already done, uh, so I should be fine. <clears throat> Uh, yes, here we go. So now I've done that, I can share my library. I go to file, I go to share, uh, and I share my library. And you can see I already shared it to a few people here. Uh, you can see some of them, uh, some of them accepted. Uh, member, uh, I can see here that my colleague uh, Gustav, uh, he hasn't uh, accepted, so I'm going to send him a, a remind him about this. So and it, the invitation was uh, resent to him. I'm going to add uh, another of my colleagues here. They're going to be really happy. They get so many uh, 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 reminders. Uh, so I'm just going to invite him. Uh, he is. He will have uh, read and write. He can also have only read only, uh, but he will just have read and write. So I'm going to click on invite, uh, and now he's invited as well. So fine. We're sharing the library. We share the same references. Everything is fine. <clears throat> Let's create. Uh, 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 let's create a, a, a manuscript in just a few seconds. Uh, bear with me here. I'm gonna do some magic for you. So uh, I have a document here. Uh, I have my references. So I'm gonna take this. Uh, to be uh, honest, we're going to take this uh, reference that we already have here. This is how we're going to do, do it really fast. We're going to take the the abstract here. So I just wrote my abstract. Fine, uh, happy. I have an abstract in my my uh, uh, references. We're going to take this. Uh, I'm going <clears> to. <throat> I have a title in, in my abstract. I need to add some uh, some references, of course. So we're going to go back here uh, again. Let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm going to do this. Uh, we're going to add these references to my uh, my um, uh, document. So I'm going to add those uh, again here. I'm here. I'm going to click on EndNote. I go again and I tell EndNote to, to insert the selected uh, references. Uh, I'm going to insert them as a numbered style. Uh, and you see, I just added them in one place. But now I have, at least I have a, a document here uh, connected to this. I'm going to save this document. Uh, we need to save it somewhere. Uh, and uh, let's uh, give me a minute here and let's save it to uh, uh, to this one. We can save it here. So here it is, uh, saved. So I have this document, it's saved here. If I go back to EndNote uh, and show you uh, you will see something interesting. So here you can see that I added, uh, I added, uh, uh, I formatted my document. So there's a temporary group with this, uh, with these 11 uh, references. So I can easily, easily find them. But I want to sh store them all the time. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on, um, I'm gonna go here, and I have all of these references uh, that's in my document. I'm gonna highlight them, and I'm gonna add them uh to a, a group so i'm going to create a group that i call manuscript one uh yes uh and i'm going to rename that uh let's call it manuscript one here we go so i have this group with with uh with the references all my references from my my um, uh my manuscript <clears throat> Uh, but I also want to, I want, you know, it, I don't want to reuse them. I want to see what references do I have in my library that I have not used in my document. Well, so let's create another kind of group here. Let's, let's right click on this group and create what's called a smart group. A smart group is something that, that uh, uh, runs a, a search algorithm that runs in the background all the time. Uh, so let's do that. Let's search for the word uh, A in any field, which means all references have the, the letter A somewhere. So let's do that. Uh, create, and it, you see they added 25 references in this group automatically. This is a dynamic group. It changes as I change the information in my library. And you can see that it's all references is 25. And they, of course, they all contain the word letter A and were added to this, uh, this uh, 
uh, this group. And now I want to see, you know, so which one are in the group A uh, all, uh, but hasn't been used in this uh, in this manuscript. So let's create another type of group. Let's create a group from groups. So these are non-used uh, in this case, non-used uh, references. I'm going to call this group. So I want all the references uh, in the group all, but I don't, I not want the references in the group manuscript. So that should give me then a group of, uh, I can't even uh, calculate the difference here. Let's create it and you see, I have a, a group with 14 references. So these are my references that I have not used in my, uh, uh, in my manuscript. Uh, the groups are quite handy. You can make a lot of groups, 5,000 groups. And again, I want to mention the, uh, again, I want to mention uh, this one. Again, I want to mention the upcoming events we have, not the training, uh, but the, the EndNote, uh, new EndNote, because in the new EndNote uh, 20.2, they have introduced the possibility to search or filter your groups. So if you have a lot of groups, all of a sudden you can filter them and find the ones that you want to, uh, which is quite, quite uh, uh, handy. Now, Another thing that I want to mention that's that's really exciting with the with the twenty point two uh, version coming up, and all of those who haven't up, upgraded to uh, to uh, uh, version twenty yet, this is really this is a really good uh, functionality that's coming. So it is it is of course very very important to to support your own research with other people's uh, legitim uh, research, and, and that is why it why we use references in EndNote, of course. The number of articles retracted by journals today has increased tenfold during the previous 10 years. It's either due, it's either published due to mistakes, due to, to uh, fake uh, information, cheating, or, or something else. But, but the fact is that uh, published articles are retracted. Uh, citing an article that has been retracted uh, can basically taint your own results and credibility. But with a new functionality in end of 20.2, you actually get a live retraction alert functionality. So all your references in your, your uh, uh, library is checked against a retraction uh, data online database. And, and any retractions, any references that are retracted for some reason are highlighted in your, uh, uh, in your uh, uh, library. So it's really, really good. They are flagged in your, in your library. And it's all automatically done. Uh, you don't have to do anything, uh, basically. But that's one of the news in, in the twenty dot two coming up. So I know I know I know I don't have a lot of time now. So I'm going to do one last thing that I'm going to do really really fast here. Uh, we have our our document here. This is our uh, manuscript that we created. Now I want to publish this, of course. So how do I do that? Well, I go to of course to manuscript matcher in in EndNote. Let's go quickly to uh, Manuscript Matcher. I'm already logged in. I already added my EndNote, uh, uh, my EndNote, uh, uh, here we go, uh, my EndNote uh, login, EndNote Online login details. So everything was automatically, it uploaded my 11 citations, references. It, all it asks me for is my, my uh, uh, title, which I have, and my, my uh, abstract, which I also have, uh, so I'm going to add that. So I added my uh, my uh, title, my abstract, EndNote uploaded the citations, and this is all done by by the producer of EndNote, Clarivate, uh, who who is the the organization that that uh, measures impact factor. It is the organization that owns uh, Web of Science, one of the biggest online databases. Uh, and they use all this information in order to find, to match your manuscript with the with the journal. So let's click on find journals here and see what it says. So I did get some good here. You can see the, the total score up here and I have some a really good score up here. Uh, I even have a, a PMC oral health. Of course, it's PMC that, that uh, PubMed uh, Central uh, that has something because uh, it's, um, that's where we took the, the abstract from. 
So it has a similar article. Let's click on that and see what the similar article looks like. Auto health status on that else. Well, it's all about a little bit. It's connected anyway, so it's it's no big surprise there. Uh, let's go back and we can see here that it's a good match. I can see the current year's uh, impact factor. I can see the average impact factor the last five years. You know, it's 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 good. Uh, it's it's a good uh, article when it comes to impact factor. I can see the keyword rankings. Uh, how well does that <clears throat> does those uh, uh, rank uh, match th this journal? Uh, I can see how this category for this journal. Uh, is ranked among uh, ranked journals. So there are 92 journals ranked within this category, and this journal is on place uh, uh, 35 of the one that is ranked. Not all of them are ranked, of course, and uh, and it's it's in the in the second qu uh, quartile for this. If I want to publish, I can click submit immediately, or I can read on journal journal information to find some more. So what we did was we created an, an uh, article, we added references to that uh, a manuscript, added reference to the manuscript, and we even found a, a journal to potentially publish our findings in. And with that, I know that uh, the organizers are getting nervous that I'm, I'm dragging out too long. So thank you very much for listening. Don't miss out on our, uh, on, on the, events especially the endnote uh, 20.2 we have it's all free uh, that's all free and we have a training coming up as well if you if you want to get started and learn more uh, about endnote yes thank you thank you peter for the great presentation